Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. Make sure that you like and subscribe below and definitely make sure you ask questions in the comments so that I can answer your questions. And without further ado, here's the one my wife picked for today. Drum roll, please. All right. <laughs> what is the P versus NP problem and why does it matter? Okay, so, all right, let me think about this for just one second. It's a computer science problem. Um, I wanna make sure that I get this as right as possible. Okay, so I believe P stands for polynomial. In other words, polynomial time and NP is non-polynomial time or exponential time. So what does that all mean? <laughs> in a broad sense, and I'll try to put up a, a figure because it's kind of like a, the way I've always seen it is a bunch of circles. There's like NP problems and then there's <clears throat> NP complete problems, which is a subset, and there's P problems. And NP contains all of that stuff. So <laughs> I'm being very abstract at this point. So let me start with that, with the uh, with the most basic definition of this. This has to do with how much time it will take a computer to solve a given problem. So P problems are polynomial time problems. And that would be, you know, if you remember like 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, equals y or something, right? That's that's a polynomial. So what that means is that it has exponentials, but the exponentials are just small, they're, they're polynomial numbers. They're like three or two or five or seven or something like that. So effectively what that means is it will take a while, like there's a lot of calculations to be done, but computers happen to be fantastic at calculations. So therefore, a computer can solve a polynomial or P problem very rapidly. An NP problem, is a non-polynomial time problem, and those generally have the exponent of, it might be something like two to the x. Instead of x squared, it's two to the x, and if you remember your math, that is a really big difference, right? So if you have one million squared, that's whatever, that's like a billion or something like that, whatever that number is squared, um, that's a big number, but uh, two to the one million is way, 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 way bigger than um, one million squared. So if you reverse it, right, if you put the exponent on top, uh, then the things get intractably bad. So, you know, there are problems that if it was a P problem, it might take a computer an hour or two to solve. And if it was an NP problem of the same exact order, so if the order happened to be 100 or something like that, it might take longer than the age of the universe by several factors of magnitude, right? So it's not just longer than the age of the universe, it's like way longer than the age of the universe. So it matters immensely as to which uh, category the problem comes in. So <clears throat> so anyway, in terms of that circle, and again, I'll try to put it up here, NP, which is non-polynomial time problems, is a large circle and within that circle is the P problems, P polynomial times. So what the NP thing means is non-polynomial time or less. And P obviously is a subset of that because P is smaller, so P is always gonna be a subset of NP, which is why the circle is contained in there. Um, and it has been proven, as far as I remember, that there are some NP problems that can be solved in polynomial time when people come up with clever ways of doing that. Um, and so you might think like, oh, that's awesome. But that's where that other circle comes in. If I put that back up again, <laughs> up at the top, there's NP complete problems. And those have never, there's no overlap as far as anyone knows between NP complete and uh, P problems. And that's the, where the real issues come in. Because if anyone could ever prove that NP complete and P had any overlap, it would effectively mean that you could, in the same amount of time that you could check an answer to be correct or not, you could also solve that problem. And that would kind of upend all of theory. So the basic theory is that NP complete and P problems are completely separate subcategories of NP problems. Um, but it could be the case that NP complete um, I don't think that's true, but if someone proved that NP, NP complete and P even had a single overlap, it would be a massive revolution in all of computer science and uh, a lot of thought around those issues. Uh, I think somebody once said it would mean that if you could listen to a piece of Mozart music, you would be Mozart. I think that's kind of the equivalent of what those two problems are. Um, I should go back and I should say one of the things about uh, what P and NP means is that solving the problem is much more challenging than determining whether you are correct in the problem. So what does that mean? 
that means that if you can check a problem, right, you might be able to check a problem really rapidly to see if it's correct. So have you answered the answer right? Yeah, you can find out, right? You can go and you can find out rather quickly. To actually discover the answer to the problem is where the long, long time comes from. Uh, so anyway, so generally speaking, these NP complete problems are relatively easy to check, right? If you happen to get the right answer, you can check that really fast and you can find out whether the answer is correct or not. It, but it's very difficult. It's in fact impossible in any kind of a reasonable amount of time as in the age of the universe to discover what the answer to the problem is. The traveling salesman problem is one of those great examples of that where with, uh, you know, four cities, it's relatively easy to answer. But, you know, you go two to the four, not so bad. If you have 100 cities, two to the 100 is a really big number. Um, and so that's the reason why it becomes very intractable to solve. So let me go check and make sure that I'm correct. I'm pretty sure I am, but let me go check and I'll be right back. Here we go. Okay, so... <laughs> As expected, I am correct. Uh, so Wikipedia's definition, I think, is a reasonable definition of it. It says, P versus NP problem is a major unsolved problem in computer science. It asks whether every problem whose solution can be quickly verified can also be solved quickly, which is what I was saying. Sorry, I kind of got to that at the end of my definition. But anyway, it's, it's uh, um, actually, interestingly enough, it is a Millennium Prize problem, and it carries a $1 million prize. So if you can prove that... P and NP are completely separate sets, or alternatively, if you could prove that the two of them have any overlap, then um, actually the any overlap would be easier because all you have to do is come up with one case of the overlap uh, to prove that that's not true. But if you could prove that NP complete and P problems are completely separate, that would be worth a million dollars. So get on it. <laughs> I do know a lot of stuff, but I don't know how to solve the Millennium Prize problem. That would be a rather challenging uh, thing to find out. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my answer to this interesting question. It is definitely worth a read. You should go and take a look at things. I'll try to link a couple of articles below. Make sure you like and subscribe for more of these questions, and also make sure you ask questions in the comments or at drknowitallknows at gmail.com, and my wife will go through and find them, and she will ask them, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Till next time, bye-bye.